we love the story of Balaam. How many have heard that story before? Good. It's in the book of Numbers, which I know is everybody's favorite book. <laughs> right next to Leviticus, right? Um, <clears throat> the story that has gone so far, and this, and this is chapter 22, and uh, it has begun the story of Balaam, and he will continue through chapter 24, actually, in the book of Numbers. Uh, but what has happened prior to this is that Israel is starting to make its way into the Holy Land after its time in the wilderness. And so it has already defeated Canaan, Amor, and Bashan. And so Balak, the king of Moab, knows they're coming his way. And he sends a couple of his wisest men to Balaam, who he knows is a prophet, and he says, I, I want you to come and I want you to curse this, these people because I know that whoever you bless is blessed and whoever you curse is cursed. So Balaam receives the visitors. He says, let me talk to God. I'll let, him know, let you know what he says. He goes to him, God says, no. So Balaam comes on and he says, no. And they beg, please, please come with us. So he goes in, you know, let me ask God, let me ask mom if I can go. <laughs> and uh, God says, look, if they really want you to go with them, go with them. That's whatever. So he does. And it should throw us off a little bit because the very first line of what was read today was, and God was angry at Balaam for going. But, you know, What I, one of the things I like about the story is that despite the fact that these other men, these, these leaders of Moab, are with Balaam at the time, the only two characters that are really in this story, this section of the story, are Balaam and, and the donkey. And for me, it's, uh, it's one of those kind of, uh, you, have you heard the story about, you know, we all have two wolves inside of us? One is good and one is evil, and then the child asks, oh, which one will win? The one you feed? It's kind of like that. From, from the donkey's side, <coughs> we can all um, kind of identify with those times where we're just, we feel a little small, a little insignificant. Uh, the first time I, I spoke about this topic or about Balaam was on a mission trip. We were in Guatemala. And if you ever go on a mission trip, you, you, can, you can feel a whole lot of ways about the, these things. But one of those ways is that there's too much to be done. Am I actually making any difference in being here at all? And so you just feel so small and so insignificant and helpless that you just wonder what, what you're kind of doing at all and just flailing around. It can be that way for community needs, too. It can, I mean, we, with these things, but what, what can we do for these people that, just, that need medical help, that just need time and healing? What can we do? We're too small. There's not enough. There's not, there's not enough of me even to give. And sometimes we can be in the presence of someone that we think is smarter than us or more powerful than us or has some kind of seat of authority over us and so we kind of shrink into ourselves and, and have that tendency to go, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. You know, I, I make this joke about my mom all the time. My mom is five foot two. She's probably less than that now. And she raised three boys and my dad. <laughs> and to this day, if she looked at any one of us and said, I can still take you, we would all believe her. <laughs> and sometimes like that donkey, we just feel beaten down trying to do the right thing and someone comes along and just gives us what for? Abusing us. 
in one way or another. And they don't see what we're actually trying to do. Likewise, there are, you can see people that are like that out there in the world. Maybe they're questionable in appearance. Maybe they're, you know, not the same socioeconomic status as you. Maybe they don't carry themselves in the same way you do. And we can be dismissive of them pretty easily. Sometimes too easily. And make judgments about them that we don't know. Oh, they're lazy. All they gotta do is get a job. All they gotta do is do this. All they gotta do is do that like it's the easiest thing in the world. So sometimes we are the donkey. And sometimes we're Balaam. We can feel very important. Think very highly of ourselves. When you go on a mission trip, this is another way you can feel. Look at what all that I am doing for these poor, helpless people. Aren't I wonderful? What would they do without me? Somebody just saves me now. It can be that way with community needs. I have what you need. What are you willing to give for it? Or one of my favorite lines ever. Do you know who I am? Oh, I love when people say that to me. <laughs> Just. Because the, the best thing, in, in my opinion, in those situations are going, no. <laughs> Sometimes we think we're more important. Or that we're the smartest person in the room. Sometimes we are actually the boss. Sometimes we see somebody doing what they, in their own circumstances, think is doing the right thing. And we think that the motivation is to make us look bad. Remember what Balaam said? You have embarrassed me in front of all of these men. And so we feel justified in abusing them in some way, socially, psychologically, physically. And then, of course, there are those times where you come across those people, right? They think they're the bee's knees. That they're better than us or smarter than us. Or we think that they have no experience of what the real world is. And so, whatever they have to say, or whatever they're doing, we can dismiss. Because what do they know about anything? And the funny thing is, both of those people in this story, even serve God. The donkey, for as lowly as she is, is able to rescue Balaam from harm and still open his eyes to the trouble that's actually been in front of him the whole time. And Balaam, for all of his importance, is still at least a little bit able to see, a little, a little bit able to go do some self-examination, go, hey, yeah, whoops, that was bad. And then go and do the right thing. interject something here really quickly. Um, we have we have a problem.
problem in our society right now about the idea of what truth is. Because when you read a story in the Bible about a donkey give, being given speech and taken to Balaam didn't even bat an eye at that. All of us were like, what? <laughs> and the battle is kind of between truth is being too much associated with fact. That if you don't have data to support it, there's no truth in it. But I don't know about you, but I've read stories and seen movies and plays and things like that that are fiction, but hold truth. And that's what stories in the scriptures can do. Whether or not Balaam's donkey actually spoke to him doesn't matter. What it comes to us is a tale of who sees God and how they act when they see God and when they encounter God. So if you are ever, at some point in time in your life, when, if you are ever the donkey, If you're feeling small, if you're feeling humbled, if you're feeling weak or insignificant or just beaten down, or you see someone who seems to be that way, remember, God spoke to Balaam through his donkey. And he's been speaking through them ever since. Likewise, if you're feeling superior, a little haughty, a little powerful, like you're the authority, or you see someone else being that way, remember, God spoke to Balaam through his ass, and he's been speaking through asses ever since. Amen.